Hey everyone, this is Dave, and today we are going to show you how to create one of these cool analog clocks for your live stream. So I really like the look. It kind of goes back to the old cable TV help channel days, and today you're going to see how to do it. So here we go. So our first step is to go to this website, timeanddate.com. It's a very cool website that allows you to build custom clocks that you can then embed into web pages. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a custom clock here and then create a text HTML file and save it on our desktop with the code that we generate here for our clock. And then we'll use that as a browser source inside of OBS to make our clock appear on the screen. So first we go up to the apps and API section and we go to free clock. Now here's an important shortcut I'm going to take just so that the demo is not too long. We're going to you can, mod you can go through the step-by-step -step and create a clock from scratch, but if you've created one before, you can click that button and you can, you can paste the HTML that you got from a previous session into this frame here and do import from HTML, and it sets the defaults as what you created before so that you can ju just do minor tweaks so you're not reinventing everything from scratch. So that's what we're going to do. You can see this is the clock that I used for our demo, and I will show you some of the important configuration things that we need to do in the next step. So you click continue here, and this is your clock template. You can go with a pure digital clock if you want with all sorts of options, or obviously we're going with analog clock. And if you don't want to key it, like if you just want to superimpose it, you can choose any of these presets and just use them pretty much easy and, and quick. But we're going to do some chroma keying, so we're going to have to do some customization in the next couple of steps. So you hit continue, and then the first thing you need to do is set your time zone up here. We're in Chicago, so that's what we've got selected in the pull down. Uh, the analog clock size, you want to go with the largest size possible for your clock. And the reason that you want to do that is you can always scale it down in OBS, and if you choose one that's too small, the pixels will get interpolated when you read it into OBS as a browser source and that makes your key a whole lot nastier. So we're going to choose a larger clock face. 200 pixels is fine, 210 is fine. And then for the key, I need to be able to chroma key it, so I've changed the clock face background to green, 00FF00. Uh, all the other stuff is pretty much the default, and we're going to go to the next step to customize other aspects of the clock. So this is where you customize the tick marks if you don't want our ticks, you can get rid of those. If you want to leave them in, you can. Uh, I like the classic Swiss Railway clock look, so I'm going to leave them in. Uh, you can customize all the different ticks on the clock face. Go to the next step, and this is where you customize the hands. This is kind of a cool thing. You can change the movement type. So you can have it do a jump and bounce where it has kind of this analog inertia with it. Uh, or you can have the classic smooth electric look where it just kind of moves around in a smooth continuous motion or you can have jump to next which is what I've got this set up for. Uh, hour, minute, second hands, you can adjust the colors, the widths, the lengths, all that kind of stuff to make a clock the way it look the way you want it. So we go to the next step and this is the fun part. So you get the HTML code and you can see that it's basically all of the parameters that we set embedded into a URL which is then put into an iframe. So we're going to copy this HTML and then in the next step, we're going to go through and save that to a, to a HTML file on our desktop, which we'll then use in OBS. So here we are in Notepad, and I've created just a very simple shell of an HTML page you know, with the HTML head title, all that stuff. Uh, the most important thing, and the reason I'm using a web page at all, is because of this, is I need the whole body to be chroma key green, and I'm going to put the iframe in the middle of that. So I'm going to paste that HTML code that we got from the date and time, time and date website into here, and it's just the iframe's there, the body background color is set to green, and so the entire page will be green at this point. So we're going to save that as demo.html on our desktop, and then now we're going to go over to OBS and we're going to key it, and I'll show you how that all works. So here we are in OBS, and I've just got a basic scene set up with a live stream going as the, as the main page here. And we're going to create a browser capture source, which will then point to the text file that we just created. So you go to Browser, 
and we'll call this clock. And then we will enter in the URL here, so which is demo.html on my desktop. So the width and the height, you want to set a little bit bigger than what you had on your OBS source. So we'll create, call it, it was 210, so we'll create 225 by 225. And you hit OK. So now you can see you've got the page up here. It's nice and, and large in the corner, but we still got that green face. So what I'm going to do with the clock is I'm going to add a filter with the chroma key. So we do that here in the filters with chroma key. And when it first comes up, you can see it's already set to green. Um, and you can verify that here. So it's the same green. And it keys it out, but it loses some detail. And if you ever mess with chroma keys in OBS, you kind of know how to go through this. You can drop the similarity down a little bit to tighten that up. You can add the... Uh, uh, key color spill reduction to take out the halo uh, and you can see over here in the screen it actually is keying pretty good so we're gonna do we're just gonna go with that so now it's a little bit big and I can drag it and move it wherever I want and so I'm gonna go and transform it and change the size of it to get it down to like 110 pixels so I'll just go to size 110 110 and now you've got a really cool little clock that you can embed on your web page. And really useful technique, real easy to do, and uh, doesn't cost you anything, which is really cool. So hope this helped you out. Hope you have some fun with it. And uh, any comments you have, make sure you put them in the comments section and subscribe to my page because I'm going to try to do some more demos. Thanks. We'll see you later.